Good day, fellow Jersey nerds, and welcome to episode 47 of the Jersey Nerds podcast, powered by HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. I'm your host, Ryan. You can catch me anytime on Twitter at HockeyJC, or you can email the show anytime at our new email address, podcast at HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. On the show this week, it was a bit of a slow news week, but we do have, we're going to talk about the Winter Classic jersey leaks that came out. Uh, the Oilers have their throwback that they came out with. Um, we've seen it a hundred times before, so I don't know how much more there is to say on that. We're going to do fake or authentic, and we're going to do the throwback throwdown. And as always, we want you to get in on our conversations. So you can do that, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, on Twitter, at HockeyJC, or email your thoughts to us anytime, podcast at HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. Part of the staples of these podcasts are the co-hosts that join me, collective group of writers and friends of the show joining me today returning after a one week hiatus monday's writer sean what's going on sean yes i like to take every three months at least one podcast off um good to be back as per usual i will tell you what jersey i'm wearing despite the fact that unless you pay the 39.95 to get the exclusive video feed you cannot see this that's 39.95 for every half hour Tonight's jersey is a Nike uh, 19, I've decided to say this is 1999-2000, just because I'm going to inevitably get the patch. Uh, Anaheim, or Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Oh, yeah. Alternate. Which one? Uh, the white one. The superior one. I think the one that people actually like. Uh, I think I'm going to get Shlatitgalek of Lekovkov or um, Sally. <laughs> Still, Ryan knows who I'm talking about. Still, Those of you uh, under 30 probably won't. I thought we were talking Steve Ruchin before on that one. Well, we're going to get Steve. Oh, Steve Ruchin's happening probably. Who doesn't want – I mean, I think that it should be law that if you get a, a jersey that has round numbers on it, you need to put like a 3, and 8, or a 0 on there. Oh, yeah. You got you, you have to demonstrate the font. 11. 11. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> oh, man. Well – might as well. I was going to introduce him last because he's just a friend of the show, but you heard his voice. Beepo, what's going on? What do you think, Ryan? Just recording Porter the podcast. podcast. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was talking to Steve just a moment ago and saying we got to get a shirt made. Jersey, I saw that. Jersey casual we were, line. Beepo says. We were talking about it before you uh, hopped on the Skype chat. I yeah. thought I'd wear it, and I think Sean said he would too, right? There we go. Oh, I totally rocked that. You know, if I ever decided to not wear jerseys <laughs> for once, or a jersey casual shirt, or you know, I do need a hoodie and a hoodie that says "Just Recording a Podcast" with the HSC Podcast logo. I think it's pretty sharp. You know, fits into that sad boys look. Conversation that, uh, starter too. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. A starter you're, hoodie. Yeah, you're starter. Just, hit us up. <laughs> you're just walking around town, and oh, you're just recording a podcast. What podcast? Jersey Nerds podcast. Boom. Done deal. We we also need to get one for all listeners of the podcast that say friend of the show. I know I know that takes Beepo's, Beepo's title, but friend of the show. If you're listening to the podcast, you're a friend of the show. Also joining us this week, Tuesday's writer, Ben. What's been going on, Ben? I am bored out of my mind. I was listening to a Steve Dangle podcast today from before the draft, <laughs> and... Further contributing to my boredom, Jersey News has to pick up, or I'm just going to go insane. Yeah, it's going to be a bit. I mean, we may get a couple here during training camps coming up. That's happened before. But then I, th if, I think it goes pretty quiet until about, you know, Black Friday, around that time. And then yeah, we got to wait for the NHL games to put out their Jersey codes. All right, from back <laughs> in the day. I feel the day of middle school, Jersey codes. You could watch that thing with the brown ball that all the Americans like. The football. Football. The you can try watching football. We have football in Canada, and the field's a little bigger, and there's a few teams, and they all do got the Rough Riders. The rough Riders. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's who's here. That's what's going on. Let's get started into the news. And 
this past week or 10 days or it's as we said it's been slow so it's kind of blended all into each other uh we had aesthetics leak apparently the 2019 winter classic jerseys for the blackhawks and the bruins uh the bruins going with a brown and yellow color scheme the blackhawks going with a black and white color scheme They've reduced the number of stripes that were on the yoke uh, based on their original sweaters there. Uh, something we've gone down from 12 to 4. I think it's a it's a good modern adjustment. Let's start with the Blackhawks. Uh, we'll go Sean, Ben, Beepo. Just your thoughts on what we might see here uh, and what you thought of the leak. Uh, you know, I think with any leak, I think that this is pretty reasonable to assume. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I uh, you know, but as is, I think this is very plausible. Uh, one thing that I do, supposing again, this is the main design. One thing that I like about Chicago's is the way that they implemented a five stripe design without it being very, uh, you know, it doesn't stun the eyes at all. Like you can see stripes, but you can appreciate that there are that many in there. It's something that I feel that their forties design really didn't do. Great point there. Yeah, it looks like a, a modernization, or a, a slight modernization, because there's still a whole lot of stripes on this one. Um, I, again, I'm not sure that the, this leak was totally uh, credible. I noticed a couple of errors with it, one being that the the, uh, the shoulder patch isn't mirrored around on the backside. Uh, you can only see it on the front. Um, but in terms of uh, something we'll see, I think... This is very plausible because I don't know what direction the Blackhawks can go in at this point. They have so many. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is just about what everybody had expected the Hawks to do. So it's something that, you know, I completely understand or complete, or I'm not surprised if this is the actual design at all. And I do like the reduction of the shoulder stripes in it. And while I don't think it would look terrible with the shoulder stripes, I think it keeps it from looking like a little bit too much for the modern era. It's something that I'd really have to see on ice in both ways to really tell which one works better, I think. Just based on what we're seeing, if the if these leaks work out to be what, what we are going to see on the ice, and uh, from what I see, I mean, there's no reason for me to think that these aren't, aren't going to be the jerseys, but based on what we're seeing from both Boston and Chicago, what kind of equipment are we going to get? Are we going to just get a standard, you know, the colors matching – the jerseys, or is there any chance that someone does some sort of vintage equipment, or is any like pretty much is anyone going to do that kind of canvas look of pants or brown leathery kind of look of pants, or is that fad past, Sean? I I mean, it, my opinion on it is as such. I love the canvas look, but Anthony Niemi ruined the leather look with the 2015 Stadium Series, and that's dead. Thanks, Auntie. Um but. Yeah, I think that honestly, I you know, the, the jerseys are, they're timeless in a sense, and they've clearly gone for some modernization here, so I see no reason to do it. But at the same time, if either team does do it, I think it'll be canvas with Chicago. Uh, that's plausible. My, my first thought was that they would cheap out and just use their normal equipment, but since the Bruins are going with brown, I don't think they're going to break out black pants, so... Maybe we get canvas for Boston, Chicago. I'm not all that sure about. I think we're this is a toss up for me. I think we're just going to wait and see what uh, what comes of this. White pants and skates for Chicago. Let's make oh, it. Oh yes, <laughs> California Golden Seals time. No, New York Golden Blades time. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I think if either of the two teams are going to use canvas, it would be Boston, and it would be a lot more plausible because looking at NHLuniforms.com. Chicago has never worn a, a pants color other than black, except for their uh, 35 to 37 uniforms, which were the chest stripe ones, which you were used in the Winter Classic, the first one they were in. So I would, if I had to bet, I would say Chicago is going with black pants. But I think it would be interesting to see white socks with Chicago, because that's what they wore at the time. Yes, that would be very cool. Just something. I, I, they, I think, and you guys might agree with me or disagree, but I think Chicago needs to do something here because if they just go with black helmets, black pants, matching socks, you run the risk of having a very boring uniform for your marquee event where people just, the worst thing would be people being indifferent towards this uniform. 
Uh, if people love it, that's great. They're talking about it. If people hate it, that's great. They're talking about it. But you run the risk of it being a very boring black and white uniform for Chicago here. And uh, I don't know if you guys feel the same way on that, that, but I think if they just go with standard equipment and matching socks, that's what's going to happen. That's where the socks come in for um, Chicago, though, because this team never really wore proper socks. And honestly, it doesn't have to be the barber pole, but make the socks, make the pants black then, but use the white inverse version of the socks because that is accurate to the time but doesn't sort of isolate the jersey from being a part of, you know, being a winter classic jersey, that it has to have some bit of uh, modernity to it. Yeah, I, I can see where having canvas equipment could really uh, sharpen this look for Chicago. Give it, yeah, as Ryan said, make it not so monotonous. I almost wonder if Boston might go with brown pants because it's close to canvas, but it's not white canvas. Although, actually, I guess if they don't go with canvas, it's probably brown anyways, huh? What else are they going to do? Yellow? White? Uh, well, that could so. be interesting. That would be an interesting look. What, yellow pants? Why not? I know it's not accurate, but I guess that's yeah. more, more of a stadium series thing. But that could still be interesting. I have tried it in the concept that identity swap one, Pittsburgh to Washington, and how Washington used to wear uh, one pair of red pants and one pair of blue with each jersey, that made one of them yellow for Pittsburgh. And it actually didn't look half bad, but I'm not sure how it would look on a winter classic look. Uh, it would be maybe something, I guess, uh, if we're looking for that in the winter classic, that would be an L.A. thing, right, with their gold and form blue uh, jerseys, purple, whatever they're talking about. But uh, So this is going to be Chicago's fourth winter classic this is going to be Boston's third Winter Classic. Assuming the leak is correct, if uh, yeah, let's rank each jersey where they would fit with that team's Winter Classic offerings. For me, Chicago, this is going to be probably, again, it's dependent on the equipment, but I'm going to say I'll put this at uh, probably their third best Winter Classic jersey. For Boston, uh, for me, this uh probably be two out of three. Sean, I'm going to throw this would probably be my second favorite for Chicago. The first being 2015, but um, I get why people don't like it. But at the same time, it just doesn't have that certain je ne sais quoi that 2015 had. And as for the Bruins, it, it Boston's never had a bad one. Uh, realistically, uh, I'm going to put it at the bottom uh, just because I love their 2016 design. Like, absolutely love it. Shocker, black jersey. Um, <laughs> and the yellow jersey really was a trendsetter, but it was one of those trendsetters that pe- that wasn't really ruined in the sense that it was oversaturated. It was just it was just a solid jersey. And at the time, it was something we'd never seen. And even now, it realistically is something we've never seen. And a jersey, I think, that a lot of people would like to see brought back. Um, this, this might be my favorite for Chicago, actually. I really like it when teams go all out with that sort of Victorian ornate, just let's put as many colors on there as we can. Or I guess in this case, let's put as many stripes on there as we can. Um, Boston, I think this would be my second favorite. My favorite would be the, um, blanking on the air. I think it was 2015 when they played the Canadians. Um, I do like the return of Brown. That's definitely my favorite part of this, uh, Boston jersey. For Chicago, in a vacuum, I think I would probably rate this second behind their 2015 one. But considering that that one in 2015 is pretty much almost exactly the same as their current roads, I'm going to put this Chicago one as my favorite, just because it's something new, and it's historical and it matches the time. For Boston, I have to put their first Winter Classic jersey first, and I can't really decide if I like this one or the uh, 2016, was it, or 2015? The black one yeah, better remember. than this one. And so I'm I'm on the fence between putting this uh, last or second. I think I'm going to say last just because I'm not huge on the brown arms. Okay, and let's, as we do with most of the New Jersey releases, let's go ahead and uh, spill our ratings if these are, in fact, the jerseys. Uh, we'll start with Boston. Yeah. And I'm giving, I, I really enjoy this Boston jersey. I love the use of brown again. I thought it worked well in 2010, and it's going to work well here. 
So I'm going to give Boston a 9 out of 10 on this one. Yeah, I'm going to match that. Uh, and that'll just tell you. It is, it is technically my least favorite Boston Winter Classic, but it's still a 9 out of 10. And that's just how good Boston has done with these Winter Classic games. I'll be difficult. I'll give this jersey an A. I can't find anything wrong with that. I don't know what I'd change. Um, love the return of Brown, so great job, Boston. I'm going to give the Bostons the lowest score out of all of us, and I'm going to say 7.5, mainly just because I think there's too much brown on the arms. I've seen some concepts that utilize a closer design to what they've worn before that has a little bit less brown, and I think it works a lot better. But who knows, maybe once I see a player wearing it, it'll look a, it'll look a lot better. All right, let's take a look at Chicago and their black and white offering. Um, I think, I mean, there's nothing horrible about it, and I like that it uh, does use a lot of stripes well, uh, but it's not knocking me over. And again, um, as I've mentioned, it's all dependent on the equipment. So I'm going to have to say it's currently sitting at an 8 for me. This is the Chicago jersey I've wanted the whole time that Chicago has been doing outdoor jerseys. Unfortunately, 2015 had to happen. So uh, I'm going to give it a nine and a half out of 10 because it's, this is just, it's the exact Chicago Jersey I wanted, but it's not quite up there with the other three outdoor jerseys that I think are perfect. So yeah, again, it's just, it, when you love a design so much, it's hard to find anything wrong, and there really isn't. In fact, they've exceeded my expectations in many ways. I love all the stripes on this one. I just wish they added some more color, uh, but overall, I really like it. I'll give it a B plus. I have to say, I'm going to give this one an eight and a half. The only thing that really irks me about it is the lack of color, but I think this time it's it's excusable. I mean, it's it's still a monotone look, but it makes a lot of sense in this case, and I'm not even upset with the lack of color. So, Okay, so it appears Ben and I prefer the Boston jersey, and Beepo and Sean prefer the Chicago jersey. So we've solved absolutely nothing here. It ends in a Brown Steelers tie. Way to go, everyone. Long live the tie. Uh, next... Long live the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> uh, let's go with uh, to the Oilers throwback jersey, which they came out with. Uh, we all know what this looks like. It's the vintage Oilers jersey. Uh, <laughs> wait, do you want to describe it again? I don't think we've seen it enough. Yeah. This is a completely new design, Ryan. What are you talking about? Boom! There should have been streamers and music and balloons and I mean, oh man, vintage design from 2017. Woo! So this is the one that the <laughs> the Royal jersey that they've been wearing uh, for years previous to this came out in the Reebok Edge format. Was the uh, blue jersey that the Gretzky teams were wearing. Um, let's start off with, obviously it's not getting quite the reception here, uh, that maybe the Oilers wanted. It's only going to be worn four times this year, but did you expect or want something different from an Oilers alternate? I know it's not classified as, as an alternate, but did you want something different from an Oilers alternate, Sean? That's almost like asking if you don't want gravity to work. It's not even worth asking. <laughs> as soon as the Oilers announced that they were going to use their orange jersey uh, when the alternates went away, we knew for a fact that this was going to happen. This was inevitable. Yes, absolutely. Right. right. But it's funny because in their team history, they have a version of this jersey we haven't seen since the 70s. Now it's ugly as sin. <laughs> But we haven't seen it. And the fact of the matter is, is that between us and everybody listening, I absolutely think that the blue version is mediocre. The white version is gorgeous. The blue version is just kind of meh. It's never stuck out to me. It's never really been anything above. It's all right. And the fact of the matter is, is now, now they have three uh, orange jerseys in their jersey history that are fantastic. And you're telling me you can't bring that beautiful Jacques Plante white version from the 70s in, and I love their current away. Make that your alternate. But go full Alberta Oilers here. Like, like, like the fact of the matter is the fans seem to like it. The whole NHL seems to like it a lot more. Do it! Like, you, you're not lo- Like, this design now, because you brought it back once already, is more associated with three failed uh, first-round draft picks, two of which have moved on from your team, and one of them seems to be on the way out the door. And, and and bad management than it is Gretzky, Coffee, and Messier. 
Are you saying that McDavid is available via trade? I just, oh, <laughs> what, you think they're going to give up Nugent Hopkins? Oh, man. He's a keeper. Jeez. He's what, a turn keeper. Turn off your Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ben, did, did you want, I mean, you've already answered, pretty much answered this question, but let, let's tack on to this question. Uh, it sounds like we, we all wanted something different. What Beepo did, didn't. Beepo, okay. So, He's on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> what did we want to see? Ben, kick us off. What, what did we want to see if you, if you wanted something different? I think we just wanted something new. Like if we, if we consider this in like the whole NHL right now, this is like the, I don't know, fifth jersey out of seven to just be a direct throwback. Yes. Uh, I mean, I mean, maybe in a vacuum, it's okay that Edmonton did this, but considering that everyone is doing this now, I want to see something new. Just except for Carolina. <laughs> if you're not Carolina, go out there, try something new. Carol- Give me something. Carolina has the ceiling. Like, like their their jersey has pro- progressively been getting better. I mean, when I think I rated it like a two out of ten or a three out of ten, so there's only room to grow. But they do have the ceiling where they're probably not going to cross a five out of ten. But their jersey is just getting better based on the fact that we it's something original and we keep getting these throwbacks and we are fully entrenched in this throwback for throwback sake era. I don't know how, what you think about that, Beepo, but uh, just bringing it back to the Oilers. Uh, were you expecting something different? What were you expecting? What did you want? I don't, I definitely wasn't expecting anything different, but I mean, at least for some of the other teams that are bringing back throwbacks like St. Louis or Arizona, at least it kind of makes sense because they haven't worn them for a while. Or in St. Louis's case, they wore them a couple times and really the same with Arizona. They wore them a couple times. The Oilers are throwing back to a jersey they wore for half a season a couple years ago. And and to add on to that, they didn't even wear it for their one playoff appearance. They're throwing back to missed playoff appearances. <laughs> and I understand why they're throwing back to this jersey, but it almost doesn't even remind you of the 80s anymore. It almost reminds you more of the recent times. And if I were to have designed this, I probably would have gone either faux back, or I guess this technically is this other option would also be a faux back, but do a blue version of their uh, WHA jersey. Yep. It's something new, yet something old. Oh, everybody gets on Todd McFarlane's case for designing an original thing. The guy's a comic book artist, and he comes up with something cool. I love and that. And what do Oilers sense. fans do? Eh, there's no orange in that. Where's the orange? We want four Stanley Cups in orange. First the team takes that away, and now there's not even any copper on it. There's no red. Oh, the ribbon between five Stanley Cups, we original. Meanwhile, like... Literally, you could bring back, like, you could bring this back for a period. And Oilers fans would be there going, Oh my God, so great. This is what we needed. This is what Shirelli is doing. Shirelli's got the team on his back. He's really looking like, like, give me a damn break. You're almost as bad as Calgary and Buffalo. You know what? That's it. You're in the Jets 96 sin bin of fandom <laughs> for constantly bringing back the same design over and over again. Go sit with Buffalo and Calgary out of the playoffs. In the sin bin until you stop rejecting new original designs. A red Oilers jersey with a steel drop on it. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Sean's rant to try and force the Oilers to bring out a black jersey, I think. <laughs> so let's talk about I just thought of it, remembered this, but we actually got a cool looking 40th anniversary patch. I think this is really cool what they brought out. Uh, five Stanley Cups at the ba- uh, at the bottom. Simple kind of banner going on there. Uh, not too hot on the retired numbers arching on the bottom, but I think the kind of drop shadow or or beveled number forty looks pretty cool. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are, Sean. Yeah, no, this is this is yeah. Well, I'm not berating Edmonton. Uh, yeah, great anniversary logo. You did a really good job here. I think that the biggest thing about it is that you know Edmonton realistically. After their inaugural season patch in the new uh, Rogers place, uh, it was a good logo. It was just it was huge. <laughs> it, it was a big logo. Uh, and I think that they needed to bring out something sort of that high detail small logo. And they did that here. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that their, uh, they, their anniversary logos with their, their 10th anniversary is pretty sweet with the double hockey sticks on each side of the Stanley Cup. 25th anniversary was the uh, the Todd McFarlane style oil drop, and they had two versions of that. Both of them looked pretty good for the time. And the 30th was pretty classic. But again, 
The thirtieth looks very similar to the fortieth, but look at that color scheme, and that's uh, ten seasons ago. Can't throw <laughs> back ten years, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I almost missed this whole this uh, this patch between the uh, the jersey coming out, the announcement on Connor McDavid being good at hockey, and then the other announcement that the ice is slippery when frozen. <laughs> um, uh, patches like this really haven't meant anything to me. It's 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 going to stick around for such a short amount of time, and it's it's really not celebrating anything other than they hit a round number for years. So I don't know. Congratulations, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I originally didn't like this look or like this patch whenever I looked at it, and I still think it has a little bit too many outlines. I mean, it's white, blue, orange, blue, white. Just get rid of like one or one of them, maybe even two. But the more I look at it, the more it's growing on me. And one thing I will say, I'm really glad there's two colored versions and that the Heritage jersey doesn't have navy blue on it. Even though you'd hardly notice it, I'm I'm glad that they at least changed the colors up a little bit so that way it's, it's not the wrong color on the on the jersey. Yeah, that's a great point. The color switch yeah. was necessary. So one thing yeah. one thing to note about the Oilers, this is their third patch in the last four seasons. So, last year was patchless. The last year was patchless. The first patchless year since uh, what are we talking? Uh, 2014, 15. So yeah, because they closed out Rexall Place with the Rexall Place. Patch. Yeah, have, and have, Rogers have. Place got the patch, the oversized super patch, <laughs> also known as the playoff patch. <laughs> the <It's>, playoff patch. <laughs> because they wore that patch and made the playoffs, they took off the patch and they didn't. So. Doesn't so, every jersey technically always have a patch on it? Oof. Beepo, you just got to ruin everything. Got to ask you. the questions that matter. <laughs> Beepo with the, the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> really, doesn't every jersey? Fucking Beepo. No, Boston's um, uh, Krautline era jerseys. And The ones with the number of on the front, you mean? Yeah, those didn't have patches. Aren't those a patch? That's an excellent question, Beepo. We're moving right along. <laughs> So the last thing we're going to talk about here is the fact that it is just a Heritage jersey, not a throwback. They're only going to wear it four times. I think you guys will be, seems like you guys might be on board with this. But I like the idea that it's not a full-on alternate, or, and they're only going to wear it four times. And they're four games with purpose. Old Smythe Division opponents. Uh, is this stupid? Is this okay? Go ahead, Sean. What's a Smythe Division? Uh <laughs> Uh, in all seriousness, uh, yeah, it's a neat idea. Uh, it's cute. I hope the other teams go along with it. Otherwise, you'll look really stupid. <laughs> like I'm just going to say it. Like the if Oilers the other, Oilers threw a party like, and forgot to tell the other teams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, just imagine just for a second. Uh, Ryan, who was in the Smite division? Calgary. Uh, okay. Calgary, Vancouver, okay. LA, Edmonton, and the Peg. Okay, so you're going to wear this against L.A., and they're going to come out in black. And it's going to be like, all right, I guess this kind of works. And then Vancouver's going to come out and ruin the whole damn thing because they're going to come out in colors they never wore against the Oilers. <laughs> and then it'll just be a Pacific Division throwback game. It'll just be a Pacific. And if you're going to do that, then break out the Dwayne Rollison jerseys and, you know, get UC Marketing to come out and drop the puck, you know, and – um <laughs> Yanni Fernando Pacini can, you know, hand out hot dogs or something and uh, <laughs> little five or six Euler references. But the point is, like, like get, get on the phone with your old division rivals and say, hey, let's have some fun. Don't just, well, we're going to have fun and you guys don't get to because we're wearing our old jerseys and you get to show up in your mostly mediocre regular jerseys. The Oilers should have thrown back to their original edge jerseys instead to match Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> mm, for, I bet Devin Dubnik would love looking at those. It's the 2007 throwback game that nobody wanted, <laughs> but everybody got. <laughs> Oilers original edge versus versus a uh, Al or Avalanche original edge. Oh, throwback! Brandon Yip drops the puck. Free puke buckets, puke bags <laughs> to the first 40 fans. All right, Ben, uh, is this silly that they're only wearing it four times, or are you on board with this? 
I'm on board with this. I think a couple of the teams are doing this. I know New Jersey's only bringing their Heritage jerseys back four games. I think uh, a few others. I think maybe St. Louis was going to do the same thing. Can't remember, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I like the the Heritage jersey status and wearing it for a few games. I really hope uh, it, this doesn't turn into an NBA situation where it's just wear whatever hell uniform Nike tells you to wear or whatever they're doing there. Uh, as we mentioned, that's a slow news week. That's what happened over the past seven or eight days. Uh, so NHL, we could use some more news to talk about here on the Jersey Nerds podcast if you want to just... Oh, next week we will have the Winnipeg alternate, which appears to be a new design based on what we've seen. They're at least getting a new logo. So uh, you'll have my unfiltered opinions. And joining us in studio... <laughs> Winnipeg and Toronto Maple Leaf and Atlanta Thrashers and New York Rangers legend. The local boy from Oshawa and Kazakhstan. Nikolai Antropov. We just have to book him and ask him. (laughs) It's so secret he doesn't even know he's on yet. But thanks for promoing that, Sean. Now we have to now we have to deliver. His boy his boy does play in Oshawa, so. Just take a just take a drive down to Oshawa and the Schwiggity and be like, "Yeah, where's your dad? Need him for a <laughs> need dad? him for a He's podcast." Six foot seven guy asking for more relish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into throwback throwdown. This edition of the Throwback Throwdown, I'm calling the Battle of the Beauticians, and this is the 1970 Cup Final, and more specifically, the famous Cup Final photo, Cup Final game, Bobby Orr's overtime goal flying through the air, Boston in their black jerseys, St. Louis in their white jerseys. This is the 1970 Stanley Cup Final edition of Throwback Throwdown. Uh, looking at Boston, this is a black jersey uh, with white, or pardon me, gold yoke, uh, white stripe, uh, I guess you could say leading to the collarbone, and uh, with uh, gold and white stripes on the arms and hem. St. Louis, this is their jersey that they wore. Uh, it's pretty much the alter, or um, pardon me, whole white version of the one that they just came out with this year, except this contains the really cool shoulder yoke pattern, which is a big blue stripe flanked by a gold stripe, which is outlined in a thinner blue stripe. Links for these jerseys will be in the episode description, but let's start with our Boston Bruins review from 1970, the black jersey. Go ahead, Sean. I I think when it comes to classic Bruins jerseys, these are maybe what you think of if you're a certain age. Um, Like, you know, they came out with them in 06 or 07. So I'm going to remember them as that (laughs) because I'm young. Um, So, yeah, these are pretty solid jerseys. Uh, I think they did a better job than the, 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 in terms of linking the logo to the jerseys than almost any Bruins jersey ever has. It's pretty solid. The yellow socks look good with the black jersey and and overall i think the striking pattern really works uh though it's always been a jersey i've seen as it never really needed the yoke really yeah it's just i look at the yoke and i go it doesn't add anything to the jersey because the yellow collar with the white tie down i think is enough color and granted it's not that it looks bad it's just that i look at it and i go you got this really nice striping pattern and the yoke kind of interrupts that Interesting, because that's what I think gives the jer- jersey its character. Ben, uh, what do you think about this Bruins jersey? I think the yoke works. I think it especially works because of the yellow socks. Usually we see socks the same color as the jersey, but here when it goes with the yoke, I think it all blends together and fits. The only thing I don't like about that yoke is that white stripe that's just kind of thrown on there, and it's just hanging out. It's not <laughs> really in the design. It's just there. Um, I think that's the only thing that really drags us down here. Great jersey, otherwise. Beepo. This is probably my second favorite Boston jersey, only behind their 90s version, which is basically this without the yoke. I love the striping pattern. I wish they would have kept it. And, I mean, their current isn't that far off, but I think this one works better just because it's more yellow than white and it's not really even. And I think 
probably my favorite detail that's probably a little bit looked over is the logo coloring. I love the recoloring of the logo on this thing and any of their other jerseys that have done it, and I really wish they would bring that back. Right. Oh, my God. Beepo's right. This just blew my mind. <laughs> the 1967 to 74 Bruins jerseys are the same as the 74 to 95 without the yoke. Yeah. Oh, you my never God. Noticed that? I never noticed that. <laughs> I was going to say whenever oh, you were making that point, I was going to say. I never I mean, noticed that. I was about to say, I mean, look at their 90s ones for your example, but I figured I I'll save that for when I start talking about well, it. Those are my favorite Blue Wizards. I never realized that they were the same striping pattern. Sean's reacting like he just discovered the H in the Whalers logo. <laughs> or, the, or the glove in the Milwaukee logo with your <laughs> real sports logos, Normie. Boom. Mind blowing. All right, well... <laughs> Now that we've just had a revelation with Boston, let's go take a look at St. Louis and their white jersey from the 1970 Cup Final. Uh, this has a really cool kind of unique yoke pattern. Uh, I We've never really seen this again since. Uh, there's been some teams, I guess the Rangers is the closest, but they were doing this long before. But this yoke pattern by the Blues is exceptional. Uh, simple striping pattern and... I think the outlining on the stripes uh, with the blue really helps it pop. I think this is a fantastic jersey, Sean. Oh, I completely agree. Uh, I think that the most memorable thing about it uh, is that the team at one point had both Glenn Hall and Jacques Plant on the same team, which would literally be like taking Patrick Waugh and Dominic Kashik and putting them on the same team and having them share. <laughs> but which is a totally different story. But oh, they're they're gorgeous. These are absolutely gorgeous jerseys. The way that the the jersey has just enough white to blend with the blue pants. Uh, the yoke striping works perfectly. This classic St. Louis numbers are here already. Uh, the logo looks really good on white. It's the superior of the jerseys here, despite my love for the blue jersey. I think the white one nails it. Uh, one thing that is weird about it: there are no TV numbers. <laughs> Which is really weird. Um, I didn't know that they did that. And it makes sense, though, because where would you put them? On the arm, between the yoke and the thread. It's just not where they are. They were they were on the blue version, but not the white version. Yeah, which is a weird thing. Uh, I thought that, that by then the NHL had mandated them, but I guess not. Obviously not. Ben? Do you guys think they pulled a Toronto and made them white on the white jersey? <laughs> no, they didn't have an insane uh, GM at that point. Owner. Ballard was an owner. Oh, my mistake. I wasn't <laughs> old enough to remember the Ballard era. Oh, poor me. How will I ever live not living through the Harold Ballard era? <laughs> yep, no TV numbers. I'm looking at a photo of Frank St. Mar- Frank Marcier. Thanks, Frank, for uh, volunteering here. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, no, no, uh, and one thing I actually didn't realize is that they, what this the striping the the yoke striping does perfectly is when the player is bent down to take the face off, it acts perfectly as a stripe. It looks perfectly symmetrical as a stripe because of how thin of a pattern it actually is. Ben, your thoughts on this white blues jersey? Yeah, I agree with Sean. The one thing I would like to point out is how great this jersey does to avoid yellow on white syndrome. Those thin blue stripes are just enough to separate it, and it really makes the yellow pop out. Just a great detail. Yeah, totally agree. Beepo? Yep, I think pretty much everything was nailed. Beautiful jersey. I love the color in it, but the only thing that really bugs me a little bit is the inconsistency with the shoulder striping and the arm striping. It's not that big of a deal, and I kind of wonder how it could be fixed, especially with also avoiding uh, yellow on white. So... Maybe that's something to uh, try in a concept, but um, yeah, there's not too much I would change about this for now, at least not off the top of my head. Beautiful jersey. All right, it's time to pick a winner. Uh, St. Louis versus Boston. Even though Boston did sweep the series, I am going to choose St. Louis here for the throwback throwdown. John. It's tough because everything that I said about the the problem with this is that it's just like which jersey could I see myself ever owning and which jersey do I think defines a classic hockey jersey? It's Boston. I got to give it to Boston. I'm sorry because it's not that the St. Louis jersey isn't great. It's just kind of forget it exists sometimes. The Boston jersey, you can't really forget it exists. And you can even take ore out of it 
And you'd still know guys like Gary Sheevers. Sheevers, not Sheevers. That's what I said. I heard Sheevers. That's what I said. <laughs> Sheevers! <laughs> You're making this more difficult than it needs to be. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. Gonna reel us back in here. I'll pick St. Louis. <laughs> All right, two to one for St. Louis so far. Beepo, are you going to Cleveland Browns this, or are you going to make St. Louis? Oh no, the fence sitter. <laughs> I really am mentally sitting on the fence here, but I am going to pull. I'm going to Cleveland Browns it and say Boston. If you ask me in five minutes, I might change my mind. It's it's really hard to pick between these two. They're both beautiful, but it might just be uh, the iconic look of Boston that's really dragging me to it. I'm not. He picked Boston because really his team ripped them off. <laughs> so in the battle of the beauticians we end in a 2-2 tie I guess that's fitting considering it's 1970 and ties were allowed looking at St. Louis they finished 1970 with 12 ties and Boston finished 1970 with 19 ties and the game, the game 4 went to overtime so the ties all around here. 1970, the year of the tie. That's so, still better in hockey. The only one team gets the cup. <laughs> so <laughs> one winner and thirty losers. I just think that matter. When when Bobby Orr trips, we all celebrate. When Patrick Stefan trips, we all laugh. I sense a double standard here. A double standard. One <laughs> one one goal won the Stanley Cup, and the other blew a regular season game in Edmonton. And yeah, you're telling me that we all like. Uh, uh, even I kept. I don't know where I was going. I just <laughs> found it funny that hockey tripping in hockey either leads to like glory or Patrick Stefan. <laughs> See, this is what happens when we have an even amount of people on the podcast. We end up we with tie ties. And I start rambling in throwback throwdowns, and Sean's comparing Bobby Orr to Patrick Stefan. I think now is an appropriate time to go to fake or authentic. Fake or authentic. Fake or authentic is the part of the podcast where I come up with three statements that I believe to be authentic, but it's up to the writers to determine whether or not they are fake or authentic from their point of view. Just like the NHL jerseys you see across NHL arenas. So here we go. Statement number one. Teams that win their division should be rewarded in the first round of the playoffs with five home games instead of the current four. Sean, fake or authentic? Well, let me phrase it like this. If Atlanta was given five home games instead of four in 06, 07, <laughs> what would it have done? Just led to more unused tickets. <laughs> Nothing. They still would have gotten swept. So I'm going to say fake for the simple fact that um, divisions in hockey aren't balanced. It's great if you're in the Central, if you're in the Metro, and if you're in the uh, Atlantic to an extent. But oh yeah, let's reward the winner of the Pacific Division. Oh wow, what a juggernaut division that is. <laughs> oh boy, you get to play Vancouver four times a year. Ben, fake or authentic? You know what this reminds me of is the SPHL. When they, when they decided that their top four teams could pick which um, five through eight teams they got to play in the first round, I really like the idea of rewarding teams that do better in the uh, in the regular season rather than just giving them a high seed. So I'm going to say authentic on this. Give the higher seed the advantage they deserve. Beepo. I was originally very hardcore fake, but now I'm just going to be slightly fake because some of your arguments have convinced me a little bit. Well, I guess Ben, because he's the only one who went authentic. But I do kind of like the idea of teams being rewarded for doing better in the regular season. However, I'm not sure this is the way to do it. I'm not really sure what other way there would be to do it. But I don't know. It just doesn't seem like... Pithy banner. What? What? Pithy, meaningless banner. That's all you get from winning the division is a pithy, meaningless banner. Or if you're smart, you make a big banner and just put the year on it. Just don't turn into Washington where you have, well, now you have one cup championship banner 
<laughs> and a whole lot of division banners that are absolutely meaningless now. Do not raise division banners. That is not cool. So Washington does. They raise President's Trophy banners. <laughs> I, I, I think the Penguins have a division banner, but it's more like one banner, division championships, and all of the years listed. It's not yeah, like that's one fine. individual one for each. Yeah, wa- Washington did individual. And it's really, it was really funny to see when they were losing to the Habs in the first round, and it's like, and then losing to the Penguins, and then losing to the Penguins again. <laughs> et cetera. Except, we, well, ex, yeah, except for once. Except for once. Yep. All right. Fake or authentic, number two. Your favorite team wins the cup and put up for sale a $100 replica customizable ring. And they also put up for sale a $100 replica trophy. So let's say it's Stanley Cup, just for argument's sake. Fake or authentic, I would choose the ring because you could put your name on it, Sean. Disgusting. No. <laughs> would I ever put my I'd get my favorite player's name on it, which trust me, if 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 an obscure team won. Like if the Toronto Maple Leafs ever won, you bet your ass I'm getting a Bacalady Cup ring. Oh god. <laughs> Backup goalie cup ring. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Then. Uh, definitely fake for me. There is no way I would put my name on a trophy that I didn't win. So what yeah. if the Red Wings won the cup? Jonathan Bernie would put the <laughs> his name get his name on the Stanley Cup. But Jonathan Bernie would have actually won the cup. No, he just sat on the couch and watched. He would have been there. He wouldn't have won it. He would have been there. <laughs> All right, Beepo, I- fake or authentic? 100% fake. The only way I would ever get a cup ring with my name on it is if I worked for the team when they won. That's it. And I'm pretty sure the Penguins did do that with their cup, uh, their last two cup wins. That's the only way I could find it excusable. Otherwise, I'm getting my favorite player's name on it or the $100 Stanley Cup. Okay. I mean, what if it's a slightly a blank ring? What if it's a no slightly altered design that's designed specifically for fans? Then Fanatics made it a no. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, actually, I do sort of have a ring like that. It just says Penguins back to back, and it has their cup wins on it. But it's not really meant to be like a Stanley Cup victory ring. It's just kind of a ring. You know what I mean? A celebration it's ring. It's not like a commemorative ring like the ones that the uh, players get. So if it was like meant to be like a commemorative ring to model what the players get, then I still wouldn't do that. But if it's kind of like the one that I have, then obviously I'd have to say yes to that one. Okay, let's go to Faker Authentic number three. Faker Authentic, I would let Mike Milbury beat me with my own shoe in exchange for a, any single hockey jersey of my choosing. Faker Authentic, Sean. I'd let Mike Milbury beat me with my own shoe to make a trade with him. <laughs> <laughs> There's a stab at Phil for you. Um, <laughs> no, totally authentic. Um yeah, uh, it didn't look like it hurt that much, uh, and that was a, <laughs> about 40 years ago. And to get myself a Dustin Bufflin Winnipeg Jets Addy Zero fully customized with the Dale Howard Chuck Knight uh, patch on it, um, home jersey. You take a thumping from Milbury. Milbury? I let Mike Milbury pound me for a bit. <laughs> well, let's not phrase it like that again. Wow. With a shoe, with a shoe. <laughs> The new faker authentic family <laughs> podcast. New faker authentic. I would let Mike Milbury pound me in exchange for a single hockey jersey of my choosing. Beepo, you're just taking this off the rails. Beepo this is about hey, Mike. Mike. <laughs> call call Beepo. He's interested. <laughs> you're lonely. Beepo wants to cuddle. Beepo calls up Mike. Listen, Mike. I'll take that first round draft pick off your hands for some sexual favors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> Ben, fake or authentic? You'd let Mike Milbury beat you with your own shoe. I'm going over his stats here, some penalty minutes. Let's see here. Uh, 1980, 77 games played, 222 penalty minutes. 82 to 83, 78 games played, 216 penalty minutes. So how much of that does he have left in him? Um, I don't know if I want to find out. I'll say fake. (laughs) Fake from Ben Beepo. All right, we've already learned that you would exchange sexual favors with Mike Milbury for a jersey of your choosing. 
that might be a little above and beyond here, depending on where you stand with Mike Milbury. But would you let him beat you with your own shoe in exchange for any single jersey of your choosing? Definitely authentic. I mean, I was originally going to say, you know, unless it's to the point where I die. But then I was like, wait a minute. If I don't die, I get a jersey. If I do die, I die. It's a (laughs) win-win. You're not going to die from getting hit with a shoe. I mean, that guy that he probably could. That guy that he beat up in New York, I think it was, with the shoe. He didn't die. He just turtled and took the shoe pounding. I mean, you probably could die if you got hit with the shoe enough. Yeah, and this is before they started suspending people for beating up fans. <laughs> that took Detroit to get involved. So, you I, know. I love that there's an era where you could beat up fans and it's fine. It's fine. That's a five minute major, pal, in the box. Did Ty Domi ruin it or did the NBA ruin it? <laughs> Who was the guy? That's Ron Artest, was that not? Ron Artest beat up the wrong guy. I think that's the problem. Was that was that in hockey they at least got the guy right who was heckling them? And then Ron Artest went in the malice of the palace and beat up the guy who he thought threw the pop at him, but it was the guy like near him that he beat up. <laughs> Way to go, so Ron the poor Artest. Guy's just sitting there watching the Pistons game going. You know, I really like that Ron Artest. He's getting really <laughs> close. Oh, my God. He's coming really at me. Ron Artest is beating the shit out of me. Oh, my God. What an honor, Mr. Artest. <laughs> More what please, sir. Fuck? More please. Okay. Typical fake or authentic went off the rails, and I love it. Um, normally, this is the part of the show where we do the HJC mailbag, but um, it's just not working like it should. Um, I advertised. <laughs> that's half our fault. We need we need to be more proactive on the mailbag, but we can only do so much Wait, here. We got a question in. We'll we'll hit the mailbag when we have more questions. Oh, can I can I hop in with one mailbag question that's sort of time sensitive? All right, DB po hop in the mailbag. Last ever Cup mailbag prediction. question for a while here. Cup prediction. As of September, let's go. It's All too right. early. Um, yeah. All right, fine. Arizona. 16 and 0 through the playoffs. Um I'm going to give a serious one. Uh it's going to be Winnipeg and um Winnipeg Toronto, Winnipeg wins in 6. Toronto wins next year. Like the Same year out this coming season. Same as Jets, all Canada Cup, Winnipeg over Toronto. Like they're just so good. Uh and it's going to be like a recurring cup final, so get ready Canada. <laughs> and um, just See, wait. I thought we were going to have four straight years of Oilers and Leafs in the cup final. <laughs> they would have if uh, Harold Ballard hadn't traded um, Bernie Perron. Oh, God. You and your references. just I can reference, like, if you want to be, I can reference anything Leafs or Thrashes related. Uh, or even a little bit of Habs, too. Like, you know, and some Jets in there. You know, Sens a little bit. Like, just obscure players from... The last 40 years, I can do that. <laughs> All right, people, how about your ridiculous September Cup prediction? My homer prediction would be the Penguins, I think. Oh, it's My more realistic one uh, would definitely still just be Winnipeg. So, I mean, or maybe Tampa, actually, especially if they get Carlson. <laughs> see, see, the problem with Tampa that's, winning that's the... the uh, Tampa gets still good. The, the problem with Tampa winning the Stanley Cup is that at some point they're going to have to get through the third round. <laughs> they have to get through the second round at this point for, for me to really get convinced by them because because they they like limping into the second round or limping into the third round doesn't count uh, and they have to stop getting hurt and to me they're a glass cannon because they've proven that if they lose Stamkos they won't make the playoffs and they've pr- and, and and realistically they're. I mean, their farm system's pretty good, but, like, they're in a division with teams that are much deeper and much younger than them. And I'm just not convinced that this is the way to go. And the fact of the matter is, is that I think Ottawa's not smart enough to trade Carlson to Tampa. I think they're going to be stupid and trade them to Vegas for nothing. They they don't trade in their own division. They'll get traded to San Jose and then back to Tampa. Well, that would make sense. Uh, I think but, Vegas is out of uh, the blockbuster trade. Uh, Vegas is just out of draft picks for the next five years, so when they rot, good. Um, <laughs> Vegas, okay, okay. The, the draft pick that Vegas just sent to Montreal 
was the pick they got from guess who? Columbus to take that pesky William Carlson off their hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which was part of the deal to get rid of David Clarkson, that the Leafs totally won that deal. Because think about it this way, the David Clarkson for Nathan Horton, if Nathan Horton ever came back, he'd still be more useful than Clarkson if you played 82 games. Oh my God, you focus on the most useless things sometimes. <laughs> Neither of them it's are true, ever though. coming back. Like, like if Nathan Horton ever came back for one game, for one he's, period, he's, he's, more, he's done more than Clarkson does in a year. He's not. It's over. He's not. It's over. Nathan Horton, if you want an HJC writing job, which is our way of segueing to... <laughs> we are looking for a new HJC writer. Uh, we need one for Mondays because Sean's moving to Wednesdays and Phil is, Phil is fucking off. So we need a new HJC writer. Uh, Phil's not totally... The PH. Get it? <laughs> Good one. Good one. It's that kind of humor that you're going to need if you want to be... An HJC writer. Uh, also up on HockeyJerseyConcepts.com, we always have the Jersey Casual line of shirts and stickers, pretty much whatever you want to put the design on. The offer still stands, which nobody is taking me up on, buy the duvet cover, the Jersey Casual <laughs> duvet cover, and you're automatically entered into the Concept of the Year semifinal vote. Um, we also have the weekly Concept of the Week vote. That goes on every week. And going on right now, the Utah Grizzlies just for fun redesign. So get your entries in by September 21st. Deadline is noon Eastern. As always, we want to hear what you think about the podcast and anything we talked about today. The uh, Winter Classic Jersey Leak, the Edmonton Oilers Heritage Jersey, maybe who your pick was for Throwback Throwdown, 1970s Boston Black Jersey versus White St. Louis Blues Jersey. Uh, you can contact us on Twitter at HockeyJC or at our new email address, podcast at HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. And do us a favor, tell your friends about the podcast, get them to tell their friends about the podcast, unless it's just the two of you, because then you're just exchanging the same information back and forth. Tell me what to reference next week. Tell me what obscure facts, you random players you want me to drop. You know, guys that played 10 games, and ask me if I'll ever pronounce uh, Mikhail Shlitnikov properly. Shlitnikov. Make a loss reference. (laughs) <laughs> Schlenkum Law Firm. <laughs> so, Sean needs some input on useless references to throw into the Jersey Nerds podcast, which extend it past 60 minutes runtime. So, if you have any of those for Sean, send them in, because he needs to hear them. That is what we have for you this week. Uh, Sean, thanks for joining us and spreading your awesome references all over this podcast and into people's ear holes. Joey McDonald says thank you, but Joey McDonald doesn't say a lot because the Marlies were mean to him. Oh, God. Ben, thanks for coming on the podcast and not making ridiculous references. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Anytime. <laughs> and Beepo, thanks for being on the podcast and not really sitting on the fence. We appreciate that. I know. It's a first, right? Yeah. All right. That's what we have for you this week. Tune in next week for another exciting episode of the Jersey Nerds <laughs> Podcast. <laughs>